So what good is it if you're trying to set up a business and you're invisible? No one can find you. No one can understand what your message is. And even more importantly, what's the point of having a business without a clear purpose, both for the business itself and for your own life. My next guest helps business owners solve these two problems, visibility and purpose. And he lives in Bern in Switzerland, originally comes from uh, Edinburgh in Scotland, and his name is James Moffat. And we had a great conversation and let's have a listen. This is the Expat Business Hero Podcast, and I'm your host, Alex Congdon. James, great to have you on the show. Yeah, you're welcome, Alex. Thanks. Fantastic. Listen, it's great to have another business coach and mentor on the show. I'm really great to have that. And listen, we'll go back and hear about your story in a moment. But I just really wanted to start off and ask, you know, you know, today, who are you typically working with? I mean, who are you typically helping? And what are the big problems that your clients are facing? Yeah, so I typically work with business owners. I mean, they come in various shapes and sizes and different stages in their journey and aspiring entrepreneurs. So typically they lack clarity and a sense of purpose and they're struggling with some visibility, which we all know is much needed now because you need to promote yourself and being a service or a product, I mean, you need to get that out there. So these are the people I help. I mean, with their challenges. So you've got, you know, Mrs. Invisible business owner today. So she, you know, she, she, she's complaining that no one sees her. How do you get someone like that to tell the world, look, here I am, here's my message. What do they need to be thinking about and doing to get more visibility? First of all, we do a, a discovery call with them to find out what their challenges are. What is it that they've got? What type of business they are? And then, I mean, Creating visibility is one thing, but we want to create it in the right places where their target audience are. So we typically find out who their avatar, their target audience is, where do they hang out, and then look at the mechanism and their best use of promoting them on the different types of social media or wherever it may be to promote them within their groups. So maybe we can use an example to actually clarify this yeah. more. So if there's a business owner, I don't know, who's a a nutritionist or a, a coach that talks about nutritional values of food or something, then we need to look at how do they get their message out there? Who is the target audience? Is it mothers? Is it families? Is it other business owners? And then once we've discussed with them kind of their, their audience, then we look at where do they hang out? So if it's food and value, maybe it's a geared around children as well. So would it be mothers at schools? Where do they hang out? How do you get in front of those? Is it business owners? Is it a workplace? And you want to have a, a healthier workplace environment and nutrition of value of food and introduce into the workplace. So then another target audience could be the work. So then we look at who it is that they're targeting and then how do we get in front of these to create that visibility? And then obviously then not, not just with that. So it could be social media, it could be groups, forums, school events, uh, businesses, corporate environment. And then how do we actually expose them in front of these audiences? But is there something different with business owners today versus the past? Because, I mean, are business owners reluctant to be seen or is it down to their own individual character and personalities? I suppose there's part of it is about being having the courage to put yourself out there as personally as well as your business. Is that part of it, uh, this reluctance to be seen? Yes, I think in the past we very much relied on, I mean, it was more meeting by acquaintance or introduced by other people referral but there's so much information now and the way that we communicate is more online there's still the offline aspect but because online and using social media is a a very relevant part of our lives that we should embrace that as well so there's business owners that maybe are more old school and they don't believe in that so they'll never embrace technology to enhance the way that they communicate so which can make it challenging as well because there's a lot of groups and a lot of information out there you just need to get out there yourself so they kind of hide in the background behind the scenes and they don't really put themselves forward so what we introduce is something to actually help expose that actually address the fear why aren't they doing that is it something that they're fearing because they they haven't grown up with it and it's something going to be new to them uh, is it something that they don't believe is the right mechanism that they should be using so this all kind of comes out from the initial discovery call that we have with them to find out 
what it is that they're doing at the moment. How do they target their audience? And is it effective? Is it working? Why isn't it working? And then we look at different mechanisms on, on to enhance that and to make it better. I mean, you're an expat, you're up in Bern in Switzerland. And I suppose expats have another problem as well, is that, that, you know, within the country they're living in, which is not their home country, they also have a degree of invisibility, don't they? Because they're not necessarily part of the local groups and societies, etc. So do you find that there are some particular issues that, um, you know, expat business owners have when it comes to being seen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it comes down to, to many different things. I mean, we look at language. As an example, I mean, Switzerland is quite challenging the way that there's four official languages and depending on where you live. So if you're not speaking a local language, that could be an inhibitor as well. And also maybe culturally different. And so you're not necessarily familiar with the way that business is done here. So, and then who is it that you're actually targeting? You can be living in the country, but you're not necessarily targeting the people in the country or you're targeting a community of people within the country. As an example, as an expat, I feel more comfortable actually speaking English. Although I do speak some German, it's not good enough to do it in, in a business way. I can get by, but I am much more comfortable speaking English. Even with an expat that's not a native English speaker, I'll feel more comfortable and vice versa. So I tend to pick the groups of people that I want to work with that by default are English speaking. So even though I'm living in Switzerland, uh, by default, I'm looking at that. So other people might feel the same or different parts of Switzerland that they feel more comfortable speaking. So language is definitely an inhibitor and can be a barrier as an expat living in Switzerland. It doesn't mean that some people haven't adopted the language and are very conversant with it and they're comfortable doing it in multiple languages. But for others, you can actually segment yourself into a smaller group because you only want to do it in one language. Yeah, I mean, this, this is exactly why I set up this podcast myself. I mean, I was very clear for me that I speak French, I speak Italian, but I was going to work in English and the expat community globally was the one that I wanted to talk with. So that's why I set up this podcast. So that was my answer to the problem you just described there. <laughs> and uh, I think it's very important to be really, you know, to play to your strengths. And if language is one of them that you want to stick with a particular language, it's very important as an expat not to just uh, go after a market which you can't connect with, you don't relate with. You know? To add another thing to that, actually, a lot of people don't just want to restrict themselves to the market in Switzerland. And even actually Swiss people uh, are part of this group of business owners as well. And they could be fully conversant with all the languages in Switzerland, but they want to conduct more and more in English because to see the, the Swiss market is quite restricted in the way that it's a small market and it's a small population. So if they have a service, particularly if they're a service and they can on, uh, offer an online service, then why restrict yourself just to Switzerland? A lot of them want to break out into kind of North America and English-speaking countries because there's a huge population. And if they're providing something online, then why restrict yourself just to a, a smaller market of less people that are actually speaking English? Yeah. Now, you mentioned that one of the other areas that you really help with is in helping um, get clarity, getting purpose. Yeah. So, I mean, what's the risk for someone setting up in business for not having a real clear purpose for their own life, but also for the business? What could be the, the downside of that? Yeah, the downside is a lot of business owners or aspiring entrepreneurs uh, want to create a business, don't always know what they want to do. So sometimes they can be easily influenced or led to believe in that oh yeah, this is where the money is and they're chasing the money rather than the purpose or the passion. So they're, they're looking at, oh yes, I can make a lot of money doing that. This person's doing that, I'll do the same. But then normally you find two years down the line, it was really not them and they've kind of fallen short on their expectations and then decided that this is really not for me. And then you, you kind of back to the beginning again, thinking, well, what do I do? So I typically help people then find that clarity and purpose. It's normally driven from basically within themselves. So things that they're good at, things that they love, and then the areas that we feel that they can grow and nurture to make a business from. So it's important to, to get that. Once you've got the clarity and the passion or you've found your niche, a lot of people kind of find it naturally, but for the ones that don't, it can definitely help them because then once you've got it, you're then building a solid foundation to work upon. If you haven't got that solid foundation, over time it will crumble and you'll end up going back to the beginning or giving the whole thing up. And if you've come from the corporate world, you might decide, hmm, the corporate world is for me and business life isn't. And then you go backwards. 
So it, it's very important to define and help people find their clarity and their purpose and then build upon that with their business. So we've got these two things, purpose and visibility. What are business, small businesses really looking for then in a, in a mentor? I'd call you a mentor if you don't mind, uh, or, or a business coach. What, what are they really looking for today? Yeah, they're looking for some guidance, actually. We don't all have the same knowledge and we're not all experts at everything. Even though a, a business coach may be an expert in one thing, it doesn't mean that they know how to do everything. And when I, as an example, when I first started out, I, I was thinking, well, as a business owner, what do I need to be a business owner? Now, I might know a certain topic and I might be the expert at that topic, but I might not know how to form a business. So then you need others. You need a guide, a coach, a mentor to actually help you formulate that. So you say, right, this is the idea. You've got clarity. You've got a purpose. You want to gain visibility now. How are you going to gain visibility? What is it that you, you're doing? So it's kind of going back to they've got this vision where they want to be, but then how do they drive that vision? So you need to put a plan in place. And then the, the plan is actually to augment the kind of all of the different things together that they need to build their business. It could be anything. It could be something as simple as they need a website. Maybe they don't need a website, depending on their business. They need a landing page. So until you understand what it is in their business and how they want to create that visibility, you have to understand what it is they're trying to achieve and then work with them on that. Because one model doesn't fit all. Different business owners come in at different stages in their business journey. And maybe have different challenges. Some kind of want a bit of training and they want to do it all themselves and others have no idea and they don't want to do it themselves. They want an expert to do it for them. So this is kind of what you need to find out at the beginning or wherever they are and their challenges are so you can address those and then help them move that forward. Fantastic. Let's just uh, wind back a little bit then because we, we didn't cover how you got here. So I want to understand from your, you know, from you why and how did you start this business you're in today, you know, what was the real driver for you? Okay, so I was in the corporate world as a senior executive, actually heading up many software companies, uh, typically American-based ones, representing them in Europe. So technology, in the way that my primary customers were the the, the big telcos. I mean, Swisscom was actually a, a customer of mine for many years, which actually brought me here to Switzerland, which is kind of another story. So I was working in technology, technology, software as a service sales, selling digital transformation, internet of things, unified communication and, and stuff like that. And then looking at, did I want to do this for the rest of my life? Or was there something more that I wanted to do? And rather than working for other people, this is something I always had the desire to do something for myself, but I, I never really knew what I could leverage on kind of the skill set of sales and, and the technology background, but then what would I apply it to? Yeah, I was feeling quite disillusioned at the time. So I needed to find my clarity and my purpose. And then once I discovered that, then I wanted to help other people do the same. So then looking at the business owners that wanted to start off, I wanted to help them in a way that I had kind of gone through those steps as well. I was moving away from a corporate environment now into an environment that was completely different. I'd have to wear multiple different hats and, and do something that was really outside of my comfort zone. I didn't have all the answers. And I was at the beginning struggling as well. I knew kind of what I wanted to offer, but I didn't know how to go about offering it. So in the early days, and, and even now, I have my own mentor. I have several mentors and, and people that, that coach and guide me. But Leveraging on that and with the skill set I've got, I can also help people similar and they want to do something like I have done. I mean, you gave me a, a great quote when you wrote to me earlier on. I think it was when you were in London or somewhere else and you're asking yourself the question, is this as good as it gets? So um, it must have been a difficult time when you're going through this transition, questioning, you know, is, is this really all it is? And, and so latching on to a new purpose must have been, you know, very, very transformational. I know it doesn't happen overnight. I know it happens. Doesn't no, happen overnight. It, it doesn't. And I mean, I was kind of in, in this corporate environment for 20 years, 20 plus years. And I was feeling that. Also, my personal situation had changed as well. I didn't want to be traveling all the time. I was doing very much international travel. And every week I was on a plane somewhere. And now that we have three small children, a six-year-old and twins, of three-year-old. I didn't want to be on a plane all the time. I wanted to be closer to them. I wanted to see how they grow and develop. And I thought, although I was good at doing what I was doing, hence being in a senior position, I didn't want that anymore. 
And I, I felt, I mean, as I said, is this as good as it gets? I kind of wanted something more, but I didn't know what it was I wanted more of. And I, I'm thinking, I'm kind of on this train journey. And although there's a destination at the end of it, how do I get to the destination that I want to be at? And if it was going to be the same as it was, then I wanted to get off this train or change direction and do something more something more meaningful, purpose-driven, and also that I could spend more time with the family. So my motivation is kind of different to other people. And I didn't want to be on that plane. 20 years ago, I wanted to be on that plane every week. It was a completely different lifestyle. But now with my personal life and my business life, I wanted something different. But I've always known being on a plane. I mean, my second office and second home was a plane or a hotel room. And I didn't want that anymore. But I found it hard to change because that that's what I was kind of good at. So I was searching for answers as well. So there you are. You found some sort of answers. You, you, know, you know that you want to help people. You want to help businesses, small businesses. You don't want to travel and you want to, be, you want to have some freedom there. So there you go. You get started. I'm sure it wasn't plain sailing. I mean, you must have had problems along the way. So what kind of challenges did you find as you were getting started up with your business? And so the challenges I had at the beginning were I had to make that kind of paradigm shift in the way that I was thinking. I had to change my mindset and I had to do something that was way outside of my comfort zone. It was easy to stay doing what I was doing, but then it also got to a point that I couldn't sustain that any longer. I didn't want to be traveling. And it was then starting to affect the job that I was good at. To actually, to change that, I had to seriously think about what it is I wanted to do, but I had no idea at the time what I wanted to do. So I ended up finding myself actually unemployed. It was a bit of a disaster. I was in a, in a situation that I'd become unemployed because I couldn't sustain the travel. I needed more flexibility in the way that I worked and the company wasn't offering that. I was basically a sales guy. And if I wasn't doing sales, then what am I doing? And I thought, this didn't work. And it, it got to a position that I couldn't do it. Logistically, it wasn't possible. And I didn't feel that desire and passion anymore. So I unfortunately became unemployed. And as part of the unemployment, I was offered these training. And I thought, well, I'll take whatever they throw at me because I really was lost and I didn't know what to do. So I went on a training. It was actually to help me write my CV and stuff. And I got there and I said, I don't want to do this. I'm just on this training kind of for the sake of it. But I really want something different, but I don't know what I want. And then the lady that was the coach at the time, she said to me, the, the problem is you don't know who you are. And I said, I do. I, I'm James. And she said, no, you're not James. She said, that's a name. She said, who are you? And I said, well, I father three kids. And she said, no, that's a situation. She said, who are you? And the more that she asked me who I was, the more I answered. And she said, no, 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 that is not you. She said, the problem is you don't know who you are. And I said to her, yes, you're right. I don't. And she said, well, I can help you find who you are if you want me to coach you on doing that, but it's not really part of the curriculum of this training. I have to do it outside of this. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm all ears. Tell me, because I don't know who I am. So basically, she helped me over a matter of weeks, helped me discover, unlock the secrets, basically, of who I was, because I had no idea. And she said, you've got so much value to And she said, you're going to tell me. And I said, but I don't know. And she said, through a series of questions and using the Ikigai philosophy. And I thought, Ikigai, what's that? Then I can help you find who you are. So anyway, cut a long story short, uh, six weeks went by. I found out who I was and I, I discovered so, so much about myself that I never knew I had. Particularly things that you're kind of born with that you've never utilized. You've gone to school and everything. And you've never taken some of these key attributes that are the making of you forward. And you've kind of, in a way, been brainwashed into society to believe in that, to, to follow the mainstream and to do what you're told rather than do what you believe. And from that, I'd kind of lost it. And she helped me find that again, find out who I really was. And then once I dis discovered that, then I felt this was so, so powerful. I wanted to know more. So then I studied it. I practiced it. I practiced on friends and family and people would recommend people to me and then I'd do that. So then I would help people find their clarity and purpose. 
But then I also had this business side to me as well, which I had been doing for 20 years. So how can I apply a business methodology and clarity and purpose gained with helping people grow and gain visibility at the same time and wrap it up into something that's more meaningful, that you can actually help a business owner or aspiring entrepreneur, even from no idea to to help them find an idea or with a a business that's really going nowhere, how to find the clarity and the purpose, uh, throw in a methodology that actually works and then help them on their path to success. So kind of that's how it started. And in terms of the business itself today, I mean, you're you're obviously helping other business owners and people who need this clarity or or business support. Any two or three other challenges that stick out after you'd got through this phase of clarity for yourself? I mean, what, what challenges have you faced along the way? Yeah, so I wanted to help people gain visibility. And visibility comes in many forms as well. So to be visible is one thing, but to actually have credibility is another. So It wasn't just about the visibility. So I was also trying to gain visibility because I wanted people to recognize who I was. So as a business owner and coach and and mentor to people, then who am I? Who is James? And what does he actually represent? So then I needed visibility myself. So I thought if I need it, then surely they need it. Because if I'm not visible to them and they're not visible to me, then who are we visible to? So I wanted visibility. But visibility, you can easily gain visibility by walking down the high street dressed as a clown. That'll give you visibility, but it won't give you any credibility. So I want it with visibility, you need credibility. So how do I create the credibility and then authenticity and then ultimately the trust? So in my journey, I was looking at ways to create visibility. So then I started to do uh, multiple different things. So I did radio interviews. I've done several podcasts and and this one also, which is fantastic. So podcasts are a great way to actually get that exposure. And then visibility, I wanted to help others gain visibility. So I created a a Facebook group that people could come into the group. If they're like-minded people, then they can share their experiences and they can help one another and they can promote their business and their services as well. So why not create a platform in the way that people can do that? So then using a Facebook group, I encouraged people to come and join and and share their experiences. This was founded in or formed in October last year. And we have over 330 members now. And it's all about them gaining visibility. Now, one way, as I said, there's many ways to gain visibility. So another way, I introduced kind of the 40-second video intro, intro challenge. So it's a way that don't just come into the group and sit there quiet in the background. But actually, if you want to gain visibility into a group of like-minded people, a lot that you'll actually know, then why not do a 40-second intro video challenge? The way it's 40 seconds is because it's kind of an elevator pitch. So you have like 40 seconds. And video, because everything is about video these days. So as soon as they do a video and they post it in the group, then they gain visibility straight away. So there were many different ways to do that. I also need to do more video myself. Because video is a great medium to actually expose yourself and people to remember. Text and pictures are one thing, but video is fantastic. So there was that within the group to do that. And a lot of people still haven't done it. They say they're going to do it and haven't done it because they're shy or it's taken them out of their comfort zone or they've never done it before and they really don't want to do it. So it's hard for some people to gain visibility. You have to really take them out of a comfort zone. But you'll find that once you've done it, it's a bit like, quite ironically, it was my mom's birthday last week and we were in the UK. And my sister said, oh, well, we're going to do karaoke. I thought, oh no, karaoke. I don't want to do that. But as people started to do it, you thought, oh, what the hell? I'm going to do it anyway. So then once you've done it once, you think, I want to do another one. So I find that once you take someone out of the comfort zone and they actually embrace it, then they think, well, it wasn't so bad after all. So gaining visibility is about also coming out of your comfort zone and accepting a challenge and doing something that maybe you typically wouldn't do, but you will definitely see the rewards and the benefits for doing it. So that was one. So I mean, we can talk about all the different mechanisms of visibility, but but these are key ones that it's yeah, not I, so bad. I'm totally with you on the comfort zone thing. I mean, 
when I first started this podcast, I must admit it was out of my comfort zone. And, and now it, it seems very natural. Just having a conversations with people like you, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. So there's no issue there. So, but I remember what the feeling at the beginning, and this can really definitely hold people back <laughs> as they try to launch their business is, is, yes. is being seen. But going back to something else that you mentioned before, because you obviously had this lady who was pivotal and helped you in this mm-hmm. question of answering the question, who are you? What other help or support have you had along the way on your entrepreneurial journey, uh, yes. mentors or coaches, and, and how important has that been? So after that, so once I felt I had a sense of purpose, uncovered so many different things that I could do. I mean, she wasn't going to tell me what job I should be doing. It was her idea to uncover kind of all the value and that I had within me. And then it was up to me to decide what do I do with it? Do I do nothing with it? Do I go back to the corporate world and complain? Or do I actually do something with it? I and mean, which one? I chose, or maybe there's several I, I chose, is really entirely up to me. So, but then once I did, I thought, well, now I want to go off in this direction. I want to be a business owner. I want to be this aspiring entrepreneur. And I want to leave a legacy behind and be me rather than, than someone else. How do I do it? So it was just around the same time then that there was a, an advert about joining a program, this industry rock star with Kane and Alessia. And I mean, they were offering to come along and embrace that, have a look and, and see if this is for you. And I was kind of feeling at that stage, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a coach. I didn't really know which way to look. I needed something to grab hold of and something that with using experts and their advice to guide me on my journey. So even though this is something I wanted to do myself. I needed the help to get me up and running at the beginning. So I joined their program a year or so ago. I mean, when I, I found my purpose, this was three years ago. So I'm not talking about something recent, but I kind of didn't really do much with it. And it was kind of a, only in the, the last year and a half or so that I joined a program to actually do something with it. And then there I have dedicated mentors I have coaches, we have training, and we have a program of different events that I learn a lot from. I knew nothing about how to brand myself. I knew nothing about digital marketing. I didn't even know what social media really was. I, I dabbled with like your own personal Facebook. When someone said, oh, no, you need a Facebook page. I thought, well, I, I have one. And they said, no, no, that, that's your personal page. You need a business page. I thought, well, why do I want one of those? And then why do I need a Facebook group? What, what will a group bring? And, and then about other social media, why would I use that? So I mean, there was a lot I didn't know. And then to be a, a business owner, I needed training on that. I needed to understand what it was. Was it something that I could do myself with some training? I felt, yes. Are there things that I really had no interest or passion to do and I could get someone else to do? That's also possible. So by joining a program, it definitely helped me discover a lot more things that were out there. I mean, I was kind of old school thinking, although I embraced technology when it came to digital transformation, stuff like that, I didn't really understand too much about other technologies, about what's the value of social media? What is copywriting? What is the value of having a website? And how can you use a website with automation and can actually convert people? I just thought a website's a website. And then once people explaining well, why do you need a website and how you can make a website work for you and social media and other things, then uh, you start to understand the value. So, so it's, fair, it's fair to say you've cut a few corners then and had a few shortcuts. Oh, oh yes. I think that's what it's about, isn't it? I mean, getting a mentor, getting someone to help you. For sure. Trying to learn from their mistakes or their successes. So you don't have to a repeat them. Of both, yes. Yeah. I mean, looking at your successes or learnings, what would you say that's important for you to share to those who are thinking of setting up a business or perhaps they're not, they're, perhaps they're a little bit lost right now in their, in their entrepreneurial journey? What um, learnings could you share, let's say two or three that are important? Yeah. Don't feel that you're alone because there's many people that feel the same. It doesn't matter if you haven't got an idea at the moment, you, you can gain that clarity and find your purpose. And if you have got a business that you feel is not really going anywhere fast, then there are experts and professionals out there. So reach out. I mean, there's people that can help. And for sure, as I said, you're, you're definitely not alone. There's a lot of people. And actually, once you start joining groups and communities of like-minded people, you'll actually discover that there's so much more in common than, than you knew. And then you feel kind of you've got a safety net of other people around you that are experiencing the same. And then 
particularly with the group, we can ask each other questions. And it doesn't matter how stupid you think the question is. If you know the answer, or there'll be someone in the, answer, in, in the group that knows the answer, then it helps. And this is what we're here to do. We'll help you promote your business and to gain that visibility and to feel that you're not alone on your quest and on your journey to better things. So what about the future then, James? What, what does it hold in store for you? What are you planning? The problem is I've got a, a very creative mind and I've got many, many ideas. And there's three areas that I want to focus on. And although people say you should only focus on one, because they're all a passion, I kind of want to dabble into all of them. But if I dabble in all, does that mean I'm less focused in the one that I need to grow? So you can become overwhelmed with trying to do too much at the same time. But nevertheless, three things I want to do is obviously help business owners. So I want to help inspire them. I want to help coach and, and be a mentor to them. I want whatever stage they are in their business, or even if they haven't even started a business, to help them and to nurture and grow that. The other thing, if someone hasn't found their purpose, then this is very personal to me because I went through that kind of turning point as well. I felt actually useless and I, I felt that I had 20 years of something that I was going to throw away and not do anything with because I didn't know what I wanted. So now that I've discovered that, to help other people find that it is so, so powerful. And you can help someone from being disillusioned and lost to, to actually find clarity of purpose and, and want to drive something forward. Kind of the last thing, although we never touched on this at all, I mean, having three kids and doing bedtime stories with kids, there's something magical that I work with them on because they're also an inspiration to me. Sometimes we look at leaders as an inspiration, but then sometimes I now look at my kids because the way that kids are, are developing and growing and the things that they learn and the, the way they feed that back to you is magical. So I do something really quite special with them. I do interactive bedtime storytelling and I take them on a magical journey every night and they look forward to going to bed. They love to go to bed so we can have a magical journey. But it's not my story, it's their story. I'm just the kind of the narrator, the storyteller. And this is something I've been playing around with. I, I record them all. So I've got three years of recordings of bedtime wow. stories. But I've done nothing with it. And I was speaking with other like-minded business people. Uh, we come across people that are storytellers. We come across people that write children's storybooks. And in talking to them, I, I kind of parked this. I've never done anything with it. And then once I start speaking to them, I say, why haven't you done anything with it? And I'm thinking, because I, I never even knew that that was a purpose or anything that I could do something with. It's kind of more of a hobby. And without going into all the details about that, because that's something magical in itself, it's really the art of bedtime storytelling that I can teach parents and how they can interact with their kids. And it is magical. I mean, if you can help parents have their children look forward to going to bed, I think you've solved a major problem in itself. <laughs> so, no, absolutely. That's fantastic. And this is kind of how it started, because when Tom was a child, uh, it was smaller, it was a struggle getting him to bed. So it was kind of something that I've learned the art of doing over three years. And now I've kind of mastered it. And to teach other parents the art of doing it, it's not me going to tell the stories. It's about them interacting with their kids and how they tell the stories. But once you've learned the art of doing it, then the rest is plain sailing. Brilliant. We're going to end it there. I just want to thank you so much for being on the show, for telling your story. Thank you for all the help that you give to other people. Actually, I want to recognize that, you know, whether it's in their visibility area, whether it's in their finding their purpose. You give me the website name. Your business is called Visibility Impact and your website is visibilityimpact.com. And I put yes. the, the web link into the show notes uh, as well as the, um, the link to your Facebook group. And I know that you've said to me that people can reach out to you on that website. And if they want to get on the call and have a free call with you, you're very happy to sort of uh, spend some time with them just to sort of uh, talk about their their business and their issues. So um, appreciate that. Again, I just want to thank you a lot. And, um, you know, let's do this again in the future. And uh, I wish you all the best, James. Yes, thank you very much, Alex. It's been a pleasure. You're very professional at what you do. And I love it. Great all stuff. The, thanks, James. All the best. Cheers. Thank you.